Put that into context for us, this changing of the guard in Washington. Do you think things get better from here business-wise for you guys? Does it matter? Um, I, I think uh, political side, I don't think it will matter too much because, you know, we are still in the very initial stage. But as far as the business is concerned, uh, 2020 proved, especially the second half, proved to be very good for the Chinese. And when you look at the export sector, it is, it is all firing up. And then the China being the first in, first out has been doing incredibly well. When we look into the 2021, we think the Chinese business will continue to be very optimistic for two reasons. China is one of the few countries who can mass produce the vaccine. Um, and the second part is the Chinese people in general are much more acceptable in taking the vaccination. And these two factors will be very important to ensure that we have a relatively stable year for the 2021, and that will nurture further the coming back of the growth in the sales um, consumption. So this is very important. We are very comfortable uh, for the 2021, uh, given the overall business environment. And in a lot of what you mentioned, China being ahead has actually spurred conversation, CG, of uh, you know, the PBOC starting to tighten and, 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 and normalize its policy, I guess, from the perspective of a bank. You know, we've been talking about, me and Tom have been talking about how liquidity has been tight of, uh, of late. Have you noticed that from your bank, some tightness around interbank rates and liquidity recently? Um, I think um, sometimes when there is a liquidity issue, it's mostly because of the seasonal factor and the fact that the, the central bank is very conscious they are gradually... Uh, exiting the stimulus uh, mm. mode. They are trying to put everything in a normality. But then again, every once in a while, when the market react, you know, uh, slightly too aggressively, that might create an impression that the liquidity can be very tight. But every time when that happens, the PPOC always come and they inject the liquidity. So they still want to maintain a very stableness in the liquidity side. I don't see the liquidity will be a major issue. But as a, as a whole, you're going to expect the Chinese uh, interest rate uh, pretty much normalizing and, and staying on the firm side because the economy is really doing quite well. CG, it's Tom here in Beijing. Do you expect other adjustments by the People's Bank of China this year? There's a lot of debate about what response we're going to see from the PBOC. Uh, as a matter of fact, the way I see you know, from the PBOC. I, I think um, there might be one objective that, that is not very obvious, uh, um, you know, at the moment to a lot of people is the fact that, you know, ever since uh, 2015, you know, remember the 2015, 16, we did have a situation where there's a, a outflow of the capital, a lot of which in the form of the renminbi. I think it's starting from the, the last quarter of last year, because there was so much inflow of the renminbi into China to buy the bond and also the equity. The renminbi is getting into the mode and almost the replay of what is happening between the 2000 and 2010. They are on the other side trying to defend too much of the foreign currency uh, and the renminbi, the hard money inflow into China. So you are seeing a very change of the tactics of the PBOC. And when you look at that, you can see they are shrinking the, the macro prudential measure to stop the too much of the U.S. dollar moving in. And then they are mm. allowing more QDI to go outside. Of course, this will mean the renminbi going outside. And they are also, you know, seeing and opening up a lot of the scope for the south mount, uh, the investment which you mentioned about, which is the uh, very important money flowing into the, into, the, into the Hong Kong market, all which means they are in a much more comfort, comfortable stage about the stableness of the renminbi. And then they know how they can attract the renminbi into this country. And now they need to start rebalance the, the renminbi a little bit because they, they, they potentially there can be a very big hard money flowing in, in particularly when the Chinese economy is showing so much of the strength. And when you look at the renminbi for the last couple of years, it has actually mature and being very stable a lot. So this is what uh, I think the very important things we got to watch uh, this year. Everything ties to the maybe internationalized yeah. in a way. Mm.
Uh, absolutely, and you t you touched as, on this as well. These southbound flows that we've seen into into Hong Kong uh, equities, almost 30 billion uh, US dollars worth, is quite extraordinary. Do you expect those inflows into Hong Kong stocks and Hong Kong equities uh, from the mainland to continue? And what's your outlook for mainland equities as well? Do you expect to see the kind of gains that we notched up in 2020? Um, first, on the Hong Kong side, uh, my personal view is as the China uh, in, the, in a bit of the situation with the U.S. over the equity listing and everything. So to support Hong Kong for those, uh, for those uh, equ equity names that might be imp impacted by the U.S. sanction or everything, they, they will have to go back to Hong Kong. So the support of which is important. And now when the RMB is stable, when there are a lot of money being attracted into the Chinese asset, the PBOC and the government has a lot of the muscle to put the money into Hong Kong. Remember, the money they put in the Hong Kong will be the renminbi. So this will be very different from in the old day when they are in the U.S. market and people use the U.S. dollars to buy and you, you cannot flow out of the China to use the U.S. dollars. So there is a net uh, borrowing of the U.S. But in the Hong Kong, for this why the Chinese government will be able to support their equity name. This is something for me is very important because in the, in the opening of the Chinese economy to the new economy, they have to have a much better equity market to absorb the new names, and both in Hong Kong and also in, in China as they mature. So in short, I think the Chinese equity market will continue to be very good as they introduce more and more money and institutionalize the money to go into the Chinese equity market. And, uh, and if the renminbi is stable, and renminbi is very strong, the local interest rate is very high. The Chinese government has a lot of the leeway and the PPOC to support the Hong Kong market by the southbound. And that trend may continue. And you know, they have been trying to improve that sort of rate uh, transmission mechanism. I'm talking about reforms now because as they continue to obviously change and the economy changes, you have a lot of changes on the regulatory front. You know, we heard from the PBOC um, of, of, of limiting the, say, you know, the amount of debt, say, you know, corporate you know, developers can start issuing in the bond markets. There's, you know, all these talks about what happens with the online payment space. So fr from your perspective, CG, what do you think is, is, is perhaps the, the, the biggest... Uh, regulatory change within the industry that you anticipate from China this year? I think uh, given the environment, whereas the renminbi is able to attract a lot of inflows, the agenda on the regulator is the promotion of using the renminbi, uh, previously on the trade, now on the financial side. And this is very important because in whatever way they want to do, Renminbi has to be the currency denominated in the way they can make the investment. So the prudential is only to showing something like the attractiveness of the renminbi onshore, that they want to stop too much of the hard money to come in. But that also shows the confidence they think the renminbi will increasingly increase its attractiveness, and that will be used more. And this is also evident the, the out, outflow into the into the Hong Kong. So I think all in all, the major theme this year will be the renminbi internationalization. And the renminbi internationalization means they are going to use more and more renminbi as an anchor currency for the financial investment, which is very different from the first stage of the renminbi internationalization is being used as a settlement currency. And China, with a very strong economy, stands at a very good opportunity to balance out their in and out renminbi. So it will, be, it will be very stable and it will be very beneficial for the Chinese for both this bond market and also the equity market. Hmm. CG, just a final one. I want to get your thoughts on the pandemic situation here in China. It's a world away from what we're seeing in countries like the UK and the US, but you have had an outbreak now, a number of outbreaks in Beijing, Hebei, Heilongjiang as well, lockdowns, people are being discouraged from traveling over Chinese New Year, which of course is, is a major uh, travel period. To what extent could this pose a risk to that economic recovery that you've highlighted? Um, I, don't, I don't think it will have a major impact on the economy or even the minor one, because you know, first of all, we are talking about a year after, you know, when we first have this situation. Again, I'm coming back to the two points. This is the, one of the few countries that can mass produce the vaccines 
and and the, the second second important of all is the the people here are very acceptable to taking the vaccination. So I think the Chinese, if if there's a general situation around the world, again by comparison, China will be the first to come out from it. So I, I think the, the the impact on the on the on the Chinese uh, will be will be very minimal. As a matter of fact, you know, it, it will actually prove again as an advantage for the Chinese economy, as in the case of 2020. In that case, then, if it's not the virus or the recovery, what then would you consider CGS perhaps the biggest risk to not just the economy, but to you and your bank as well? What might get in the way of your plans? I, I, I think uh, what, what would be really uh, the, 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 our plan is uh, then we are coming back on the, on the financial markets that we are dealing with. The, the, biggest, uh, the, biggest, uh, the biggest risk is the speed of the reform and the introduction of the market governance so that we'll be able to introduce new products much more efficient way of doing the hedging in all the markets where the chinese were trying to uh, promote if without a sufficient acceleration of the market governance we will we will not be able to sustain a long-term uh, inflow of the money so we need to learn how to mass you know rain that money and get them to stay in China and make our business a lot more sustainable and recurrent.